Hey guys, what's going on dudes? It is David here. We are back with another video. Now, welcome to the review for the Atlanta Falcons versus Cleveland Browns game that just finished a couple hours ago. Now, I just wanted to get straight off into this. I did not expect we I did not expect us to have a rushing game in this game. But man, oh man, did we run the ball. We outran Cleveland! We had more running yards rushing yards, then Cleveland, and Cleveland have a two-headed monster and Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. Our run defense still needs to improve. We conceded 177 yards to the Browns on rushing, but the defense in terms of passing, man, oh man, when I get to that defense, man, I got so many players I want to praise. But to start it all off, you know I got to do this. The Falcons won this game 23-20, to and in my predictions, I think I remember saying 24 to 20 or something like that or close to similar like that. Let's get on into the quarterbacks. Marcus Mariota, seven completions, 19 attempts, 139 yards, 7.3 average per throw. But here's the biggest thing. He only got sacked one time. So the offensive line was actually pretty good, but we also got to keep in mind uh, Jadavion Clowney was there. I don't think Jadavion Clowney played because I didn't really see him watching the highlights and watching the game. I know um, Miles Garrett did not play, so that's also another big factor. But he did get sacked for any guess that for eight yard loss. He did, in fact, throw a pick. But also, one thing I'm going to say this is that how many times do I have to mention Marcus Mariota fumbling the ball? Literally, in the first, in all four games that he has played, he's fumbled the ball at least once. He can't have that. And he lost the fumble. It's not like the Falcons recovered the fumble. He lost the fumble. His passer rating was a 41.4. And I would, I would, I would be shocked to see so. Seven completions for 19, for 19 attempts? Yeah, you're not going to do good. Jacoby Brissett. I got to give it to jo Jacoby Brissett. Even though our def defense did stop him in the second half, in the first half he was going off. He had 21 completions, 35 attempts. He had 234 yards passing, zero touchdowns, and a pick also. And I just want to say that that pick to end the game by D. Alford, I got to give him to D. Alford. That was a very good pick. Their inception that Marcus Mariota threw, it was a bad throw because he was covered. The guy he threw to was covered by Denzel Ward, and he kind of underthrew. He kind of just threw it with anticipation that Denzel Ward wasn't going to be there, even though Denzel Ward was already on the guy. So I got to put that interception on Marcus Mariota. But uh, Jacoby Brissett's passer rating was a 68.0, and that's the quarterbacks. Moving on into our rushing game, before I get into the Falcons, because the Falcons are the one that shocked me, let's get on into the Cleveland Browns rushing game. Nick Chubb had 19 carries, 118 yards. He averaged 6.2 yards per carry, and he had one touchdown. Nick Chubb, however, had 10 carries, 49 yards, and he averaged 4.9 yards per carry with zero touchdowns. The touchdowns that the Cleveland Browns got came from Nick Chubb and Jacoby Brissett because Jacoby Brissett had five carries, 16 yards, averaged 3.2 yards per carry, and had a touchdown. So in terms of the running game for the Cleveland Browns, they had 35 carries, and they, and they had 177 yards. They averaged 5.1 yards per carry. And they had two touchdowns. Moving on into Atlanta Falcons, however, we did we did have the same number of carries. We rushed the ball 35 times. We had 202 yards total. We averaged 5.8 yards per rush. And we also had two touchdowns with our longest being 42 yards. Tyler Algier and Caleb Hundley. Caleb Hundley getting promoted to the, the active roster for this game, considering Cordell Patterson only had, I think, he only had nine carries. And then for a majority part of the rest of the game, he was out with an injury, with a knee injury. But still, Tyler Algier, 10 carries, nine, 10 carries, 84 yards, 8.4 yards per carry, zero touchdowns. Caleb Hundley, 10 carries, 56 yards, average 5.8 yards per carry, one touchdown. And Cordell Patterson was the other guy that did get our touchdown. The rest of the points came from field goals thanks to Young Way Koo. But still, I did not know we have a running game. If we can do something like this against the Buccaneers next week, I'll legit say the Atlanta Falcons actually has a rushing game. But I don't really think so. And it's going to be interesting because if the Bucs run the defense, can stop us, 
then I then I thought Cleveland had a good run defense, but we ran we put two hundred and two yards against that run defense, so that's really good. Receiving Lamade Sakias, we didn't really get that many our uh, receivers didn't really have that good of a day because Marcus Murray would only have seven completions and seven completions were Zacchaeus, Pitts, Hesse, Algier, and Drake London. And Zacchaeus is our best wide receiver having two catches fifty five yards and Kyle Pitts. I just wanna say what why why can't he find Kyle Pitts? I'm gonna be honest. Why can't Marcus Mariota find Kyle Pitts? One reception, twenty five yards. Drake London had two receptions, seventeen yards. And that basically considers the running game for the Atlanta Falcons. Moving on into the receiving game for the Cleveland Browns, David Njoku, the tight end, like I said in the prediction video, was going to be the X Factor. He had five receptions, seventy three yards. Donovan Peoples Jones had five receptions, seventy one yards. But the big one and AJ Terrell locked this man down. One reception, nine yards for Amari Cooper. AJ Terrell, have a day. Now, now we move on into the defense. The Atlanta Falcons had one fumble recovery but they lost the fumble. Marcus Mariota fumbled the ball. Rashawn Evans recovered the fumble that that uh, that I believe it was. Uh, I forget. I forgot who forced the fumble, but they they forced the fumble on David Njoku, and Rashawn Evans ended up recovering. Atlanta Falcons defense came up clutch and won us this game. Michael Walker, eleven tackles, eight solo tackles, zero sacks, zero tackles for loss. Rashawn Evans, ten tackles, five solo tackles, zero tackles for loss. But the guy I want to say is having a very good day in a career research or having a year a bounce back year. Grady Jarrett, five tackles, one sack, one tackles for loss, two QB hits. Lorenzo Carter, seven tackles, one pass deflection, one QB hit. Richie Grant had a tackle for loss. D. Alford obviously had the pass deflection and the P and the and the pick. So, yeah, this Falcons defense is here, and I'm looking at this list. One name I don't see there because he really didn't get that many opportunities to do something with A.J. Terrell, and I just hope A.J. Terrell has a better chance to, like, shut down the receiver or have, like, get a pick next week against the Buccaneers. Moving on to Cleveland's defense, I mean, Phillips, seven tackles, six solo tackles. They had one, two, three, four Tax for loss. So the Cleveland defense was pretty good when it comes to like getting at the quarterback and you know, like tackles for loss. But ultimately, this game came down to the running game between the Cleveland Browns and the Atlanta Falcons. And surprisingly, it was a very close game. I expected this game to be a very close game. But the Atlanta Falcons, thanks to the rushing game and thanks to that D. Alford pick, won against the Cleveland Browns, moving us to two and two. And so far. I think I've been right about every single prediction I've done in my or in my Falcons season prediction video because I said we're going to lose against the Saints. I said we're going to lose against the Rams. I said we're going to beat the Seahawks, and I said we're going to beat the Browns. Our next win isn't going to come until, I think, against the Panthers, and that isn't for another three weeks. So I'll take this win. Very good performance by the rushing game. Very good performance by the defense. Marcus Mariota needs to get benched, and that's all I have to say about that.